Hello, native English speakers, as I walk downstairs and not kill myself. There we go. You're now looking at the back of Lennon's head. And the reason I can talk here without holding up a cell phone is that Lennon doesn't really seem to be very popular around here. And notice there's not a lot of people. Oop, more stairs, pardon me. Do, do, do. But he's a pretty imposing dude. And so, now that I get a little bit of linen, what I'm going to do, or try to do, is take you on a quick tour, uh, right across, straight shot, this direction, past the bus. Oh. That's the Central Park. I took a few pictures of this before, but I will maybe give you a small walking tour of Central Park, assuming it is still open and the sun does not set. So with the eyes of Lennon casting down on us all, let's head to the park. Okay, this will make some of my uh, homosexual friends happy because I've decided to enter from the rear, as it were. Uh, you can see, I don't know what that's supposed to be. The park is designed in large part to please children and families, but it's also a romantic destination spot. It's also a place to do cycling and find reasonably evenly paved roads. And you'll see kids as well. But at the rear of the park is this lake. So once again in the middle of the dead center of Central Asia, I found a body of water where I can stand and contemplate life and in theory in the summer months stare at women who aren't wearing a lot of clothing because that's half the fun of again living near a body of water is looking at other bodies. It's a nice lake from a distance if I went up close you would see it looks a lot like uh, Mission Bay, Long Beach Harbor not the cleanest water, nothing you would want to swim in So, I'm afraid of Ferris wheels, and I have been for years. There are many reasons for this. Number one, I've never seen one that's built and seems safe. Number two, I saw the movie 1941 as a child and it traumatized me. And number three, members of my family have ridden on Ferris wheels with me and, well, traumatized me. Every major city in Kazakhstan seems to have a Ferris wheel. They all kind of resemble each other and you couldn't pay me to ride on them. Well, you could, but it would be a substantial amount of money necessary to ride on this Ferris wheel. Substantial, but I mean, we're talking at least a, a thousand just to get me into the thing and not have it move. Uh, to have to ride on this Ferris wheel with a member of my family, at least ten grand. And we're talking English, American money, not, not, not tangy. It would cost a lot of money to get me on this thing. But it's located right here in the center of the park. You'll see other attractions as well. You can hear the swings kind of going in the background. And in the wintertime, they don't really pack these rides up. They just sort of let the snow and ice and everything else cover them. And then they rust over and, yeah, it just makes it fun for everyone. <laughs> so Dave and Buster's fans will probably recognize this. At least they were always in when I first started going to Dave and Buster's. You would see it at the kind of the entrance, like in the mall entrance at the Ontario Mills one. It's a little sort of a mini Star Tours type of attraction. And again, best, best kept indoors because it has a lot of electronics in it. And they just kind of leave it out here. I, I, I may ride this one, but I notice it's not working. Go figure. Go figure. Out here kind of on the far side of the lake, if you want to call it a lake or a pond, your guess is as good as mine. I'm actually hoping there's some people up on the bridge and I would really like to get up on the bridge. But I also know that I attract enough attention as it is. And I don't really want to walk on the bridge and talk with them there. I cast a long shadow. I need to lose some weight. But there's something on the bridge I want to talk about. I may walk over the bridge and then talk about it later.
So I don't know how well you were able to see the bridge or see what was on the bridge. They have these padlocks on the bridge. And if you could see, there was writing on the padlocks, and in much the same way that you write on, you know, write, oh, you know, Kevin loves Shannon Doherty on the bark of a tree. Not that I've ever done that. I haven't. I haven't. I think other people have done that on my behalf. But uh, they write it on the padlock and then attach it to the bridge. And to me, it carries a slightly different meaning than carving it on, onto a tree, because a tree is essentially going to be there for a while. The padlock, if, if the relationship falls apart, you just go back to the bridge, unlock the padlock, and there's no evidence of your past relationship there anymore. Uh, kind of speaks to the transitory nature of love, as some people might understand it to be. I did ask around when I first saw this, and I was told it is a relatively new idea uh, here in Kazakhstan, this idea of writing, writing Kevin loves whoever on a padlock and putting it on some place like a bridge, some other public area, so I thought it was interesting. I have uh, another area I want to show you here, just around the corner. Alright, so I took a picture of this last week and I showed it to one of my local friends and I asked them about it because it's sort of an interesting looking building. That's kind of a modern looking building and so I was surprised to see that it's more or less boarded up. It isn't being used and I was kind of, it's off the beaten path and I said is it because it's off the beaten path that nobody uses it? And I was told something interesting. Now, I have no way of verifying whether or not it's true. But uh, the girl told me, and of course it's a girl, because why would I have local male friends? That's just silly. Uh, the girl told me that this building is a very expensive, very elite hotel, restaurant, shopping area, and that its only use is uh, during, sorry, there's people walking. I don't want to attract too much attention to myself as I'm kind of trash-talking a part of this area here. It, it is so expensive, it's so elite, that its only use is when the president of the country uh, visits. That the rest of the nation, literally everyone else in the country, cannot afford this place. So unless President Nazarbayev is visiting Karaganda, it stays boarded up, it stays walled up, and I don't know how good you can see it, because I know the sun is certainly in the camera shot. It's kind of tough to see, but it really is an interesting looking building. But you can see that literally they've put up these concrete barriers surrounding it, no one can get to it. And I'll be curious, if President Nazarbayev does visit, if they do take this down and open it up to him. And how expensive is more expensive than everyone else in the country. Makes me, I don't know, I wonder about it. Do you wonder about it? Do you wonder about me? I would if I were you. Let's kind of walk along the path here, and again, hopefully this isn't too disorienting or too much like a bad 3D movie. But the park itself is similar to Balboa Park in San Diego, a place that I really enjoyed, and I think I would enjoy this place too. Typically, uh, it would be busier in the summer months. The trees would certainly be greener, and it really should be closed by now. It is October 31st as I'm walking down this path. It is Halloween, and ordinarily there is snow on the ground by now. Ordinarily, uh, the rides would not be operating, I was told. There wouldn't be any of the cafes open. Um, you could still walk around here, but none of the attractions would be available because they just don't expect it to well, the weather's been nice. It's, it's a nice way of saying the weather has been nice, uncharacteristically warm. In fact, I'm wearing my, my kind of brown winter coat and sweating like a pig. Not that you needed to know that, but I like to share all of the information about myself here as we go down these paths and try to find my way back. I'm hoping we can cross over the bridge and there won't be anybody on it. But I make no promises. But there are different little paths, obviously, to walk around. There's different rides to ride. There's a lot of nature. There's a lot of places to sit and talk and eat. It's really a nice little park here in the heart of Karaganda. And all kidding aside, I like it. It's okay, very quickly, because people are approaching. You can see they've written their names on the bridge itself. Traditional, do that in America. But also they've written their names on the locks. Okay, 
people have been asking me about people here in Kazakhstan. And this seemed about as good a place as any to sort of capture, well, women walking. There's a couple of men around here too. As you can see, pretty traditional Kazakh fashion. I'm pretty proud of myself that I did not resort to uh, any Jungle Cruise references while kind of giving you a tour. No backside of water, none of, nothing like that. So I give myself credit for that. Anyway, we're kind of here. This is the main entrance. Like I said, I took you in from the rear because uh, I thought it'd be a funny joke. And I'll kind of conclude with a look at this. Uh, we started with the statue of Lenin, we'll end with the statue of, looks like a soldier. I don't know, kind of look and see what it is. This is riveting, watching me walk towards something made of bronze. Huh. Well, anyway, I don't know who he is. I don't know what he did. But from his feet to, to my face, hope you enjoyed the tour.